I'm Jody Nichols from Jerome and Redbird here in Hay Hunter. And I'm just curious, this DBA, is it designed for revitalization of, of, of the downtown as the former speaker up here mentioned? I was thinking it was going to be downtown, downtown businesses, revitalize those downtown buildings. Do, does the DBA want to make it like those billboards that we saw, the cute, quaint little town? Are they going to establish it in that format? Is that what they want to do, or do they want to establish businesses? And if they do, it sounds like it's only going to be developers that come in, and it's to the developers' benefit and they're going to have to fill the building with the proprietors that will sell to the community. And therefore, the prices would have to be equitable to the people's ability to purchase. I wonder if anybody on the board knows if Adel has a better business bureau. They are having business, do they? they do. I, don't, I, I don't know if ADEL is active. They did at one time. I know they had a downtown development authority. Well, they're not even, if they do, it's not developing the downtown. I don't know if it's still active. But the Walmart is a downtown. Obviously, they have to have areas for parking. But uh, the Zaxby's and the Longhorns and the new Dollar Tree that are all coming there are certainly bringing business and providing jobs. And they're not having to do all of this other building uh, and, and hoping that people will come in and rent the spaces that are provided to the people that are coming in and providing their own space. But I'm just curious as to the downtown development here. It was gorgeous to have that cute, quaint little town that Hay Hira once was. And is that what we're trying to accomplish? Or are we really trying to bring in businesses for the people here to have jobs? I'll address that really briefly, and I, I hope I'll address your question. I know there are some folks up here who probably do a much better job than me, but the Georgia Municipal Association had a, a, a focus uh, a few years ago, uh, and they called it a sense of place. Okay. And a sense of place. Mm -hmm. For uh, many communities uh, throughout the state of Georgia, the sense of place is the downtown, and is the revitalization of downtown, the improvement of buildings, there is uh, a comprehensive effort that's being undertaken by the council. The DEA is just one component of it, but you've got uh, a whole uh, investment opportunity that the council chose to take part in in the railroad property, which lies just across from the core uh, downtown buildings that are there. Uh, so many opportunities present themselves with a, a central park concept that has been proposed, uh, as well as a bandstand that resembles the old depot. Uh, and uh, a central fountain. Uh, a sense of place fosters uh, a sense of community for people to be able to congregate and move out. Uh, there are those who have been in Hayhira for many, many years who can testify that the city uh, was once bustling with activity. It still does today, but uh, they had a number of different shops and people walking around and, and just so much. And we still have some of those things, but a DBA would serve as a catalyst to emphasize and even further create a sense of place. I want to add uh, a real life experience about this word sense of place. It is when you read your focus group responses, you are describing a place of a power that you all want to have a sense of place. And long time ago, we were up in a little North Georgia town, and the, one of the people there said, son, we don't want zoning. 
we want to make business. That when I worked at GMA. It was the idea that we didn't want control, we didn't want the government. And they kept talking in this community about what they wanted. And we finally all just sat down and said, then you have the most work to do. If you want to protect what's here, if you want Hay Howard to be the charming, beautiful, and it is a beautiful town, it's got some issues all around the town. But um, you've got to work at it. And the DDA is just one tool of many. Um, it's a very important tool when you talk about the core of, of the community downtown. But I want to take you to a real sense of place, Mona. We were out in Covington, Georgia. Do you know where that is? The county seat of Newton County. Did you ever watch The Vampire Diaries? Did you ever watch The Heat of the Night? All of these movies have been filmed in Covington. Not because Covington looks like everywhere else, but because Covington made a decision 20 years ago to do exactly what you talked about in your focus group last fall, of to maintain, as Jonathan said, that sense of place. And you want to hear the great irony? One of the leaders there, who runs the Center for Community Preservation and Development and Governmental Training, is a Hey Hire girl, and her name is Kay Barfield Lee. And she does a fabulous job, and that county is supported, and that city is supported. And hearing what you said and what you've asked, um, it's, it's just sharing with you that what you say that y'all want in that focus group, a DEA could be a, an approach to making sure that you get there. I think your very question actually supports one of the reasons you would have a downtown development authority, and that is to bring people together to develop a common vision to discuss what do you want as actions, do you want a Walmart, do you want a quaint historic downtown. Uh, that, that is actually part of what they do and set about how to accomplish that, to preserve what you have, to grow what you have, um, and, and in some cases to prevent what, what you don't want. And I think we haven't discussed a lot about the benefits of a downtown authority of, of sharing resources, in other words, of sharing the expenses of the marketing an area, marketing businesses, uh, to, to uh, address design so that as, as people develop downtown over time, that it, there's a consistent respecting the historic character of it. So I, I think that is actually part of what they do, is actually create a vision we get a plan of how to accomplish that division so that you don't end up down the road with things that are incompatible with what you hope to have in your downtown. Um, our downtown does tax themselves. They chose to do that because they wanted a higher level of maintenance, for instance. We have dedicated public works employees that are downtown every day. Um, so there are some reasons why a, a downtown community would want an additional tax. They want a higher level of service. They want more events in the downtown. They want some staffing assistance to even help show their buildings and show their space. So that, those are the decisions that you make by having these meetings and, and having discussions. And there's several things about taxes that I think be careful spending too much time about that because those are decisions that would be made later. But in some cases, our downtown businesses wanted to see a big investment. Our downtown was dying in the late 80s and early 90s, and so we developed a streetscape project which was part SPLOS funding, part DOT funding, part a federal grant, and part the downtown businesses agreeing to tax themselves. And what was interesting about it, they agreed, they signed a petition to tax themselves. It was signed by 70% of them. And, and, and they issued a bond for their share of it that would be retired over 20 years. Well, because that public investment resulted in so much private investment, in fact, since that streetscape project, there's been $31 million of private investment in our downtown. Those bonds were actually retired five years early. They were retired, in, no, actually retired eight years early. They were retired in 2012 because of all the new investment actually made the taxes go away because now there were taxes on properties that had before been vacant or underutilized. So, I think there's a lot of reasons you have a downtown authority. Recently, and it's a good problem, we were having some complaints from downtown businesses about parking. And yet, in some cases, it was the employees of the businesses that were taking up prime spaces that would be better reserved for customers that want to spend money downtown. So they had come to me about wanting us to start writing tickets in a parking lot. I said, well, we may end there, but we shouldn't start there. So we started by getting our authority together and having a conversation with downtown 
business owners about how can we manage this problem. And then they actually started going to each other and saying, you know, our employees should park over here, park over here, and leave this good parking for our customers. And so that's that's what they're doing now. And those are all examples about having people that are, have a common shared goal of being successful and work together doing authority to address issues that sometimes aren't just issues that can be addressed at every city council meeting. Only one other point, and then we're going to sit down, and that is, uh, Jonathan, you mentioned the municipal area, and we have seen pictures on that, the schematic lines and so forth. It was a wonderful, wonderful area. And that ought to be incorporated with better, with better business planning for downtown uh, if that's what you're intending to do because that would, that would take care of parking, some of it, a good deal of it. Plus the fact you were saying people could go and walk through the parks and stuff. That would get them down as much as going down and spending money or wandering <coughs> through the shop. So do you have a plan on which one is coming first? Are they coming together? Are you building a downtown municipal um, area and doing a DDA at the same time? Or is the DDA separate? Or when are these plans coming? Great question. Yes, ma'am. Um, they they are separate, uh, and the um, uh, the uh, park concept and all of those issues are, are uh, actually special um, projects that are funded by referendum through the special purpose local option sales tax uh, seven. So uh, there are components within those public park, that public park, that area, that are funded through that. And the council is actually going to spend the 2016 retreat talking about the next steps with respect to that project. The Downtown Development Authority is something that the council has been uh, pushing forward uh, concurrently uh, and will continue to do. Its uh, interest and intent is from a commercial standpoint, and uh, that, of course, is something that the council will continue to debate. To get big business in a hire is somewhat slim. The uh, bulk of the people in the other side of this are going to get the uh, larger business. Uh, I have one question for Dallas. There, what was your DDA tax? DDA tax. There, when was it passed? No, what, what was the millage rate on it? Five minutes. Five minutes. So, it, I think you made a statement that DDA limited to three mills, I think the DDA go up over ten mills. But, um, Not DDA, but I mean tax district. Oh, it was constitutionally created back in the 80s. So right. Of Clarification. Uh, uh, DDA that you all were talking about would come under the 1981 Enabling Act, which um, specifically says the DDA itself cannot tax, uh, and the attorney brought that up. Um, the Central Valdosta Development Authority, I grew up there, and I can remember in the 1960s when that was created, and they built Denny's Alley from uh, just, you know, the plans, and, uh, but this more recent major street renovation that they've done, um, Larry, was what, 13 million? Or 12 million. Um, and Mayor Register, the lady who did the facilitation for you all last fall, was their downtown manager when they kind of re- uh, re uh, if you will, started that uh, revitalization program, but uh, let's make sure we're clear. That taxation is the taxation that was, was utilized because of the powers that the Central Valdosta Development Authority was given through the Constitution. In 1983, the Constitution of Georgia was rewritten, 
and all of the constitutional authorities had four years to ask that their powers to be extended. In 1987, if those constitutional authorities did not basically reconfirm that they wanted to exist, they ceased to exist. But we're sharing with you that the DEA that the city of Bay Power is considering would be uh, under the 1981 and 1992 amendments as well as the 2006 amendment that did away with them in the program. So you're saying that's the maximum of two bills? Well, and that's coming from the OCGA, and I've got the code up here uh, in my computer, but that's the city's ability to establish a tax district anywhere. They're limited by, and Mr. Attorney, correct me on that, they're limited by statute to three mills in a municipal um, tax district. And for the moment, forget a DEA. But the city of Bay Howard can create a tax district by code and go up to three mills. Yeah, now there are other districts that can be created. There's a the city business improvement district, a community improvement district, and they all have their particular limitations based on statute or the Constitution. And that's all within the DEA. Comes, that comes under, it can come under the DEA. It can, yes, it can come under the DEA. can choose to create one to assist the DEA, right. but it's not mandatory and not required. But it's a subgroup of it. You, know, you can have other millage rates apply under some different subgroups. Right, and remember what I said that in Tifton, 30 years later, they've never created a tax system. Well, I went through, I think I mentioned this a while back, I went through, and I think I found about 60% of the DBAs in Georgia have tax districts. And uh, some of them, I think, were like 6 7%. Uh, I don't know if that's a rollover or what. But uh, there's a, another issue with the city of Hay Harbor. We have very limited sewer capacity. We're talking about a big DEA after that effort. Well, I think uh, two years ago, our city engineer came up, and I think it was 250 homes was the maximum we put on our additional on our sewer system. Now, since that time, we probably built another 30 homes. So, let's say 225 homes. Then we're in trouble. So, if we're talking about explosive growth, and that's what I say about the DEA is forced growth. Uh, the citizens of the Ohio are going to come up with additional funding somewhere to support all this growth. That's part of the infrastructure. So, you know, we in the council have talked about uh, pipelines, uh, some of the uh, use in the county. So, but any of that is going to come out of the citizens' pocket. Now, that's a big issue for the city of Ohio. We've had sewage issues for a long time. Trying to force growth, I think the DEA does, which is going to come come out of a problem in the city. <coughs> so, uh, I think oh, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, Howard does not have a sewer capacity problem. Uh, I have the paperwork and it was presented to the council that he, what was his name, Rodney Dudley? Uh, said that we could put on, I think it's 251 homes. Perhaps that existed before the modifications of the Springfield were done. No, this was after the Springfield was done. I got there the There is over. no sewage capacity problem in the city they hire. Okay. It hasn't been for quite some time. No, there hasn't been. been. In fact, that's why the consent order was, was rescinded mm -hmm. from your correct. Your 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 we can put on 200, and I'll bring you the paperwork tomorrow. And, it, and you should still have that. 251 homes at 350 gallons per day. And that's our capacity. And that's, you know, the DDA's gonna hurt the city. You know, and we were a small town. But, you know, Valdosta's got a much larger population. Justin, much larger. Uh, hey, how are this growing? You know, we, we get, we, like, our parties, we've got the Huddle House, we've got a couple other businesses talking about coming and locating for Hey, how But to, Come up with a map like we came up with, some of the people. Yeah, that's it. And one other issue that I want to, I think this is a, somebody else talked about. Back in 19, I think it was in the 80s, when the Hayhara had a small DBA district. The council voted the entire city in the DBA district. So people had nothing to say about it. So as Mr. Miller said, 
We cut him out of the district, and the district's of the lady. Uh, we cut her out of the district. All the council does is wave a wand and vote on it, and the whole city is in the BDA. So the map really means nothing. It's just a starting point. Discussion. Thank you. I got some okay. feedback in minutes. Then for a record time. All right. All right. Uh, our time is 8.28. We have two minutes before the panel will be late. So we will uh, get get take it. one more question. On. One more question. West Central Street. I come in the hands of the I think it's something that we see how it needs to be. Uh, in 1981, I think my brother was on the city council at that time. I think you probably changed more about it. In 1984, when we purchased our church from the city of Hayhara, um, there was a BDA name, and Gene Webb was the mayor at the time. And through his, through the process, their process, we were able to get the church. And I think, not incorrect, still the Commission was part of that. And we were able to come along to convert the church to that. Uh, I don't know, I've been in Hayhara for a few years, that's my age. And uh, I don't think a lot of people understand what Ahar was like. Ahar had four grocery stores, they had a Western Auto, they had a Mother Memory War, they had a Dairy Queen, they had a, a storage, they had a hospital. We should have been standing like this when they, we allowed the hospital to leave Ahar. So uh, I don't understand what's the issue as far as my understanding is you got more revenue coming in the city, there's less taxes for everybody else. So I'm not understanding what, what the problem is. I think the information is going out that's incorrect and everybody's confused about what's, what's what. I don't think we have city council sitting on the, on the council. And I, and I trust the city council we have sitting on the council at this time. I've known some in the past that were not that great. So uh, I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, what are we fighting for? My, our property was on the other side of town. We had no problem with it. At the time, the issue nobody had a problem with it. So I, I didn't understand it before the <coughs> Oh, sure. Gina. Gina. Okay, thanks. Uh, stand right now. Our time is up. But we welcome any <coughs> questions. Through City Hall that did not get not get answered tonight. Uh, if anyone would like to submit any more questions to us at City Hall, we will contact the panel member and talk with them and get the answer for you and get back with you just as soon as possible. But I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. And I appreciate the panel. Uh, uh, city attorney, city manager, and I also just like to thank uh, all of our city council members for showing up tonight and listening to all the questions and the comments. It can be directed later on in our discussions at our work sessions and our council. Thank you all for coming.
Marilyn is so into this. She knows so much about it. And Barbara gets up there, and just because there was only two minutes, she didn't ask a question. And she's one of the ones that, get in there. Get in there and ask a question. Well, how about, you know what's going on a whole lot better than I do. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> wasted a lot of people's time just asking a mundane question, but are they trying to revitalize downtown and make it look nice and clean? Are they trying to get business in? That was one of the questions that I asked, because if they want business, they don't have to go to downtown. And I'm not real concise when I get up with so nervous, but I'm a kid. Well, you can write it down and submit it to the one up there to Jonathan and answer it. Well, they answered, they somewhat answered it, but Jonathan even brought up that municipal thing. And it's a, a place for a sense of being. Well, yeah, but they, they came up with that and nothing has been started. And that's why I wanted to know, what are you going to do? Start the vote? Start one and do the other? What's your plan? But I guess I had a whole bunch of questions in there. For me, that's my opinion. But you know, yep, the mayor laughed when I said that, and I think that. But but I'm serious. At any time, just like they they said that the the uh, city council draws the, the line. At any time, can they change them? Or are they in concrete at the time they? And and so then, if the DDA is running out of money, they can just increase the line. Why in the world didn't you get up? There was two minutes. No, when they said, well, we have two minutes, and then you sat down, and then later on, she got up, and they could have said, this lady was up here. They could have said that. 